when we were getting into this in the uh, about 2010, 2011, we were scrapping for ideas, brainstorming, and uh, we kind of looked to the beef industry and we knew that uh, bloat, frothy foam was, it was an issue uh, with that uh, industry. And uh, we also knew that uh, there were a couple chemicals that could be used to uh, uh, reduce the effect of the uh, bloat or frothy foam in, in the rumen. And one was monensin and the other one was uh, proloxylene. Uh, monensin alters the biochemical pathway in the rumen. It increases volatile fatty acids so that more is absorbed by the animal and thus reduces the methane production. Uh, then the same thing happens with uh, proloxylene in the uh, uh, frothy boat and grazing cattle. So what we did is we uh, initiated a, a field study and uh, where we looked at uh, uh, six sites here in southern Minnesota and uh, we came one of the requirements was we had to have four barns, at least four barns on a single site that were fairly identical in the way of uh, uh, the building style, management, feed, genetics. They were typical grow finished buildings, uh, 1,100, eight, 10 foot deep pits, uh, either side by sides or end by end. Uh, here's a couple of aerial views of uh, uh, some of the sites or three of the sites that we used. Now, as far as the experimental uh, design procedure here, we kind of calculated the, uh, how much we should be adding to these pits that were similar to what was added to uh, uh, feedlot cattle uh, at the similar rates. Uh, then we had a zero control, 2.5, 5, and 10 pounds of uh, uh, rumensin per 100,000 gallons. So in a typical 1100, uh, head barn with close to a half million gallons, we'd be putting almost uh, 50 pounds or so in that highest rate there. Then for the proloxylene, uh, the bloat guard, we used the Rumensin 90 as a control and we looked at uh, one pit that was 60 and then two pits at 100 pounds, which we just labeled 100 pounds A and 100 pounds B. And I should point out as a sidebar, we're very really thankful that the producers opened up their facilities to us to let us come in and, and uh, experiment, especially when they got 1,100 pound pigs in there that were kind of at risk. This was our best site. Uh, Pre-application, we had about 20 inches of foam uh, in all four of the pits. And then we added our uh, rumensin and coming back three weeks later, you can see that the, uh, the treated uh, pretty much knocked all the foam down. Uh, our zero application for some reason or did drop, but after six weeks, everything was gone. Now, this is a perfect example of what research should do. And this is something that altered that this didn't quite work out. Um, but the same results, it just took a little bit longer. It took about six weeks instead of three weeks, but uh, the rumensin did knock down the foam. Um, proloxylene, uh, the bloat guard just didn't uh, work for us. Uh, we come back three weeks later and uh, the proloxylene, uh, the, the foam was still there, whereas the romensin uh, did knock it down. So at this time we gave up on the bloat guard uh, and, that, and gave the producer a couple bags of romensin so that they could treat their pits. Uh, but I'm guessing we just didn't get enough of the bloat guard in there to uh, really do any type of an effect of knocking down the foam. So based on that, we come up with uh, some uh, recommendations here. And uh, the first thing I want to note, uh, note here is that this is for the state of Minnesota. We've worked with our pollution control agency and we've worked with our Department of Ag so that everything's above board. They know what's going on. Uh, they don't condone it, but they don't endorse it. Uh, they came back with a philosophy that uh, blowing up some buildings is much, much worse of an environmental hazard uh, instead of putting monensin in the manure, which it is not approved by EPA. So our first recommendation is right after a pit gets pumped, we recommend while the equipment's still there, the agitation is to throw in about two to four pounds of, uh, of this monensin rumensin. And that'll last nine, 10 months in keeping the foam down. 
Now, as far as the cost, in, in, in southern Minnesota, you can buy rumensin for about $12, $15 a, a pound. So for about $40, $50, you can treat one of these pits and have a pretty good insurance policy. It's not going to foam. If uh, a full pit or partially full pit is, is foaming, our recommendation is to uh, uh, add five pounds per 100,000 gallons. And the recommendation is to do it right underneath the waterers. So it does have a tendency when the water gets spilt, it would spread out across the uh, uh, across the surface of the manure. Uh, we've had producers that would very patiently drop uh, two or three ounces of this material at 96 places throughout, throughout the barn, uh, just a PVC pipe with a funnel on it. Um, but that took a lot of patience to do that. One issue that we're running into now in the last four or five years are people are getting complacent. Uh, they're tending not to add the rumensin. They're forgetting about that these pits could foam. Uh, they're worried about biosecurity or economics or the next virus that's coming in. Uh, so one thing I really want to point out on this is that we really don't want to get producers out here to be complacent about this issue. Iowa, they came up with a sticker that can be placed on the doors as a gentle reminder to think safety, um, to check for foam. Our recommendation is to do it at least weekly or every time you enter the, uh, the building is just to take a few minutes and stick your nose into that pit to see what's going on. Then if pre present, either treat it or figure out if you can pump out a little bit earlier or so. Proper ventilation uh, is needed. You need to have some sort of emergency backup of the power goes off. And one thing we really wanna stress is that you never shut off the ventilation. Uh, even when the building's empty, uh, repair work all in, all out, uh, cleaning things, you still need to have that ventilation going. So reiterate, never shut off the ventilation here. Eliminate sparks, and this could be difficult, something that's uh, very difficult to do or almost impossible, but the cigarettes, uh, light switches, motor starting, they will spark. Pilot lights on water heaters and on the uh, space heaters, and then uh, we're recommending to uh, uh, producers, if they're doing any repair work of welding or grinding, is to isolate that, put in welding blankets uh, so that the sparks don't go flying all over the place. Lastly, I'll reiterate that our recommendation right after pumping, add a few pounds of the monensin, let it circulate in for 10, 15 minutes or so while the equipment's right there and that should take care of it for uh, most of the year. Uh, this is important enough. I want to end here uh, just reiterating that this stuff does flame, it does spark, and you get this uh, gas emission of this, of this methane coming off.